It's looking like Walmart might be over for RVers. It's completely disgusting. Hey everybody, welcome to the channel or welcome back to the channel. I am Paige. I travel full time with my husband Justin and our cat Ratface in our RV, our moving castle Calcifer. We've been nomads for about a year now. And when we got in this lifestyle, it was all we heard about. Stay at Walmart, stay at Walmart. Walmart parking lots were championed as a great resource for RVers, a great overnight. They didn't have hookups, but you could stay there, pull over, and extend your travel days, you know, have a quick overnight to boondock. Boondocking, if you're not aware, is the RVing term for camping without hookups. So basically, you're parked. <laughs> for something like a long travel day, people are like, Walmart is great, you can stay there overnight. It can be a little loud, but it's reasonably safe. And the nice thing is that all your supplies, if you need anything, are right inside. But I'm here to tell you something. We haven't been able to stay overnight at a Walmart. And instead, we've had kind of hostile receptions at Walmart. In this video, I wanna talk about some of those experiences we've had, as well as what we've actually been able to use Walmart for, and some alternatives to Walmart if you're looking for a quick overnight on the road. All right, so story time. The first indication I got that Walmart wasn't going to be the legendary haven for RVers was when we were in Cincinnati. The first thing we did when we went full-time is we traveled in a big burst, quick travel from Dallas, up to Cleveland where we had a lot of friends. We used to live in Cleveland, we moved to Dallas. So on the way there, we had a friend who'd moved to Cincinnati. We decided we'd have lunch with him since we were that day driving from a overnight at a bourbon distillery in Kentucky to a KOA in Columbus. That's what we were doing. Anyhow, our good friend, we decided we were gonna have lunch with him. We kind of looked around and found a place that looked pretty good. And when I was pointing it out, Justin was like, oh, there's a Walmart next door. We can park in the Walmart parking lot. We can have lunch with our friend and then maybe go back and pick up some groceries at Walmart. We'll have a place to park the rig and we can have lunch with our friend and it'll be really, really nice. And we even pulled up the Google Maps of the place and we rolled in and we saw that it was, you know, a nice big parking lot. Justin even found big rig trucks parked there, which is usually a really good indication that there's room and that it wouldn't be that weird to see an RV there, or so we thought. So we get to Cincinnati, we pull up, and there are these signs everywhere that are like, no parking. Not no overnight parking, but no parking for big rigs and RVs. And we're like, oh no. Because we're on this tight deadline, we're trying to get over and have lunch with our friend, but they're not even gonna let us park in the Walmart. So Justin did some quick thinking. He looked at Google Maps real quick and it looked like he could just navigate into the pizza restaurant parking lot. So he drove around, he got in there and he kind of parked lengthwise. We did a really early lunch because it worked better with our travel plans. Because it was 11 a.m. and nobody was at this pizza restaurant, we were pretty much the only people parked so we could fit in and everything. We had the room to get out. So we do that, we walk in and we talk to the kid working at the counter because he's just a young kid, probably, you know, high school, college age. And I say, hey, we have our RV parked out front. Is that okay? And we were like quintuple parked with five parking spaces we parked through. And he was like, oh yeah, sure. <laughs> Even though it took up like a quarter of their parking lot. But anyway, we had a really nice lunch with our friend and then we came back out and we were like, wow, that's really weird. Like this was maybe our second week of RVing. It was, you know, our first Walmart experience. It was like, hmm, this is very, very, very strange because people are talking about how you can spend the night here, how it's a good camping option, but they don't even want us to park. And we've seen some similar signs on the road other places, whether we're out in our Jeep and shopping in a Walmart and we see um, no camping signs. We saw a lot of those on the Pacific Northwest coast, which I guess they just figure it's a desirable place for people to kind of set up and stay. But also <laughs> recently we saw a first when we were heading through Louisiana, we saw some Walmarts that had these bars. They were like height restriction bars. They were specifically trying to make it so that the really tall RVs or some of the big rigs couldn't enter the parking lot. But yeah, so really hostile. Can't even go in and park, like physically impossible. Like forget about the signs. I've seen countless other stories on the forums, online, elsewhere on YouTube about similar hostile receptions at Walmart. You know, places where maybe they boondocked in the past and they parked, but now, you know, the new manager says they can't. 
uh, the installation of signs, the bars, similar things to what we're going through. So I know we're not the only ones out there. So unfortunately, it's looking like Walmart might be over for our viewers, at least as a good overnight boon docking spot, which is a real shame. There are still some locations I hear that allow it and you always want to ask the manager. So if there's a place that you find that you want to boondock at Walmart, it's a good idea to call ahead and make sure with the store manager that it's okay. Although I will say I have heard of instances of people, just anecdotes online, that took those measures that you know did some research and then they call the manager and the manager's like yeah sure and they show up and then they still get the dreaded knock on the door because either they haven't informed overnight security or there's a different manager on duty by the time that they come to camp and then this other manager is like no it's pretty dicey out there right now so this begs the question why walmart used to be really friendly to RVers. why this change I've done some research and I found a lot of incidents, reports of RV campers behaving badly in Walmart parking lots. And when it came to behaving badly, there were three major categories that I found. The first were people overstaying their welcome. Walmart as a parking spot was always intended as a quick overnight. They didn't want you to, you know, put out your camping chairs, put out your awning, put out your slide, set up to stay there for a whole week. But some people did that, like bad house guests, they overstayed their welcome. The second thing that they were having trouble with was people partying and creating loud disturbances. So, you know, they had their chairs out, had the TVs on, you know, maybe drinking in the parking lot, which can be illegal, depending on the city jurisdiction to be drinking in public like that in a parking lot and creating an unpleasant atmosphere for Walmart customers. And then the third big category is just, it's disgusting. It's completely disgusting. People were dumping their gray water tanks, which, some people are like, oh, we can dump it on the ground, you know, it's just shower water. That's questionable, first off. Second off, you really don't necessarily know what's gotten into your gray water system. It could be all manner of things. It doesn't comply with drinking water ordinances, etc. But putting that aside, there's a difference between dumping gray water on rural land out somewhere where it can just seep in the ground and do what it does and dumping it in a parking lot. Like, what? It's, it's going to be unpleasant. It's going to be gross. It's just going to sit there. It's, yeah. I think another factor in all of this too is that RVing has gone up in popularity in recent years. We know the, uh, the great event of 2020 and a lot of the remote work opportunities that sprung up because of that have really fed into it. And it's just popular in general. As something becomes more popular, even if people are using the service as intended, it's going to get overcrowded. It's going to be more annoying and more of an imposition to store owners, even without the bad actors. So Walmart as we know it might be over, but does that mean that there's no use for Walmart in an RV life? No, not at all. We've actually had some times when Walmart was frankly really useful to us. For example, hey, sorry about that, I had to move. <laughs> Thanks for bearing with me. Filming outside at an RV park can be unpredictable. Let's just put it that way. So anyway, um, Walmarts can be really good for an impromptu rest stop when there isn't another option. So for example, we were doing a long travel day along the Florida Panhandle. We are driving that coastal highway there uh, where there aren't rest stops, there aren't truck stops, there aren't big places to put the RV in. And one day in particular, it was raining like crazy. We couldn't even see very far in front of us. And we had a long travel day and Justin needed to take a break. So we were able to pull off into a Walmart and it was great. <laughs> Nothing too glamorous. It was right next to a Hooters, <laughs> but it saved us. We wouldn't have made it otherwise. And we found that specifically on that stretch of highway uh, along the coastal route in the Florida Panhandle, the Walmarts were pretty evenly spaced about once an hour. So they were a good resource then. Another way that we have used Walmart successfully on travel days is that we can quickly grab groceries on the way somewhere. That's very convenient. It's also a really great way for us to kill time when we're on a travel day. We try not to drive too far on a travel day. Justin really likes to put his whole attention into driving the RV. It depends on what we're doing, but a travel day for us can be anywhere from two hours to seven hours because driving the RV takes a lot more attention than driving a car. So let's say we have a short travel day that's only about two hours. So the first campsite we have to check out by 11. And at the second campsite, we can't check in until 3 p.m. That's four hours where 
we don't have a place to be and the travel day is only two hours. We have all this extra time. So what we've done on some days when we're traveling short is we've pulled into a Walmart and Justin would stay in the rig with Ratface and I would go into Walmart and I would buy us food for lunch, something nice to eat, and I would buy us groceries or whatever odds and ends we needed and I would come out and we would have lunch. And usually if I kind of took my time, it killed exactly the right amount of time. It actually helped us a lot for those awkward traveling short days. And I think it's a great resource for that. <laughs> as long as you don't get one of those Walmarts that won't let you park there. I will say that those are very few and far between. I've only seen a few like that, but holy cow. And I think the final way that Walmart can be very useful to RVers is they have some basic RV supplies in there and some hardware. All right, so we've established that Walmart isn't what it used to be. The golden days of Walmart are over. What other alternatives are there for quick overnight boondocking situations, either low cost or free? As far as places with parking lots that let you stay there overnight, I hear good things about Cracker Barrel still. Typically they'll let you park in their parking lot and the convention is that you either buy dinner the night before or breakfast as you're leaving, sometimes both. So it's not exactly free, but you gotta eat anyway and the food's pretty good. Again, like I said before, it's something you need to confirm. Some locations don't let you do this. Call ahead with the restaurant manager and make sure it's okay before you do it. I hear Cabela's can be pretty good, same situation. Obviously you're not buying a meal from them, but they want you to frequent them. Uh, call the store manager beforehand. Apparently Dick's sometimes I'm hearing will do it if you call ahead. Bass Pro Shop, same deal, call ahead. Some of the gyms especially if you're a member, we'll let you park in the parking lot. Obviously the fitness centers and gyms call ahead. You're hearing a pattern here, call ahead and ask beforehand. But I will say a very underutilized one that can work out really well is casino parking lots. A lot of them will either state it on their website that RVs can park and that it's not a problem. If you have any doubts, you can call them. Usually they'll want you to frequent the casino somehow, either gamble or get a meal. Some of them have their own RV parks, I know, so sometimes, the ones that have RV parks want you to stay at the RV park and pay the fee for the RV park. So it can vary, but casinos sometimes are really good resources depending on the casino. And of course, there's another resource. There are a couple of services out there. Harvest Hosts and Boondockers Welcome. We did a video on a really nice day we had at a Harvest Host at a winery. I mentioned earlier in this video that we had stayed overnight at a distillery in Kentucky. But basically, Harvest Hosts are businesses that will let you camp in their parking lot. Some of them actually have hookups. The one that we were at in Texas at the winery. It actually had an electric hookup. Harvest Host is nice. There are hundreds of locations all over the country. And basically you get the membership and you can sign up to stay overnight at all these cool places like farms and wineries and distilleries. They have like a golf course package now that you can overnight at. So the membership itself costs money to sign up, uh, but I've got a code in the description to save you a little money on that. But basically, you don't have to pay camping fees. They just kind of ask that you be nice and you frequent the business. So like, we'll you know, buy a bottle of wine or have dinner. And then it's like, you spend a couple bucks, but you save that on the RV park fee and you have a souvenir or a nice experience, something to kind of take with you. It's really fun. I, I like it a lot. Hey, I had to move again. <laughs> RV life, am I right? So the other service is Boondockers Welcome, which basically like Harvest Hosts, you pay membership fee and there's this whole network instead of businesses it's just regular people like RVers and they say hey you can stay on my land some of them actually have hookups and things like that a lot of them are like you can stay for free some of them do charge an overnight fee it just depends on the person hosting you I've even heard of some of them that will let you do laundry at their house it's, it's kind of neat we haven't tried it yet we're a little shy it's on the bucket list though it reminds me of my mother-in-law she does bed and breakfast a lot so she'll stay in somebody's home and she'll get to know them and everything and it's a different kind of experience she likes it I think it'd be kind of interesting Justin's a little bit more shy I might work on him though and see if we can do some of those but some people swear by it it's a different experience something to look into and like I said we have codes below uh, to save you some money if you're interested in either of those but yeah lots of options out there with Walmart changing I'm also interested in your stories have you found that you're still having pretty good luck staying at Walmart you know if so 
let me know below. You know, if you have any horror stories, let me know below. If you have any more tips for easy overnight camping, either with or without hookups, let me know. It's been great talking to you. Thank you for watching and I will see you next week.